hopefully this works, is working. Hey everybody, um, if you guys don't mind being the guinea pig, how's everything sound? Stop watching DeFranco for you. Thank you so much. I know that can be hard to pull away from. Oh, I'm glad it sounds good. Um, welcome guys. I thought we would just chill. Um, I like to live stream at least like once a week now. And uh, today I kind of sorted things out with my internet provider. So I'm hoping that streaming works again. Um, nothing can spill to Franco. Someone said in the comments that they paused that to come watch this and it's something I watch every day too so I was just saying like yeah that can be hard to stop watching sometimes so thank you for being here much appreciated sounds good better than usual that's good um yeah I like I <laughs> I don't want to like bother my internet provider because I understand that internet is hard right now because everybody's online but um they said that they tried to fix it on their end and that I should see results in like six hours, but that was this morning. So I'm hoping things are different. I li The last time I live streamed, it was broken up into so many streams. I'll show you guys that I couldn't even post it and I feel really bad because I always say like, when this is done, I'll post it, which includes today. But um, here, I might be able to show you guys. It was broken up. See all of those thumbnails? It was broken up into that many videos. Like, it's still... So, I didn't want to post that many videos. Um, so, there's nothing I can really do about posting my previous live stream. So, if you just joined us, um, I tried to figure out some stuff with my internet so I could get back to live streaming because... A lot of people are online right now and my my internet was so bad from like storms and everybody being online so you know i felt bad putting that on pause but i have a cup of tea and um a backup tea so we can sit here for a little while um hopefully and i thought i would just i called this like a debriefing because I thought we would kind of just chill and I would like talk to the chat a little bit and remember me from Ikea asking if your friend was John lol that was so fun I'm glad you're here um <laughs> I went to Ikea once with uh Uncle Dave if you watch internet comment etiquette um Uncle Dave is from that channel and him and I were at Ikea together and <laughs> She came up to us. It was actually really fun for me. I, I love stuff like that. Um, so this is vanilla sleepy time tea. Um, I really like the flavor, the flavor, um, of vanilla sleepy time tea. It comes in these like little pouches. So I feel like that's nice. Um, the vanilla sleepy time tea is just, um, if you guys need to make some tea, I'll just, uh, for the next, like, two minutes, I'll kind of talk about what we'll get into, but, yeah, I, um, I love a vanilla sleepy time moment. In Philadelphia, it is 618. I was hoping to start this at 6 o'clock, but, you know, being late to things now is kind of, like, exhilarating, you know? Because now there's, like, not very, very many, like, objectives, but I wanted to talk about, today I'm feeling, like, very like kind of sleepy kind of wanted to chill yesterday i did a photo shoot um i did like a paid modeling gig in the global pandemic <laughs> so i thought i would talk about it um 418 in new mexico ah <sighs> i've never been anywhere when I lived in Texas, there was a little bit of a time difference, but, like, not really. I still just, like, called my grandma, like, whatever. You know, she was up. <laughs> um, so I thought I would talk about what doing a photo shoot in the pandemic would be like. 
And now today, the following day, I'm a, I'm a little exhausted, which uh, is kind of fun, but I'm also like, I guess I'm just not in the, uh, I'm not very used to, I guess, putting forth that energy like normal, even though um, earlier this week, or was it, it was last week when I made that post about like going out food shopping and stuff and like gaining my independence. If you don't follow me on Instagram, I wrote up a little something that said like, now that I understand that I feel like I've lost my sense of independence during quarantine because I can't like take the bus myself or, you know, go meet up with friends to get coffee myself. I just feel like, I don't know. I don't feel like I have many responsibilities outside of like my career. So, um, I thought I would talk about, sorry, so I was very surprised that from working yesterday, I was exhausted because I have been, you know, going to the store and stuff, but, uh, yeah, I'm kind of just, like, decompressing from yesterday, so I thought I would talk about it. Um, I loved your style video. It was inspiring for someone who doesn't know their own style yet. Thanks for sharing. Thank you so much. I'd love to talk more about it. Um, I think between, I think between doing the photo shoot yesterday and posting that video, that's why I feel like a lot of my heart is just like a little sleepy, a little tired. I feel like a lot of that energy has been expressed and it feels good. I, I do like it. Um, so... I don't know. So, um, right before quarantine in Philadelphia, let's call it, like, March 24th, um, I was scheduled to do a photo shoot with Spencer's Gifts for content for their Instagram. Not as Quicken, but as me, just, like, as me as a person. So, just me as, like, a young lady, a young urban lady, in Philadelphia, um, but not as quicken, so I'll make that, um, uh, how do I say that? I will define my photo shoot a as a person modeling, make that differ difference. What am I trying to say? Distinction. The distinction is, uh, um, I just did the photo shoot, but not as a sponsored thing, as an influencer, or whatever like that. But, um, oh my god, it's so late in Spain, but I really want to continue watching this. If everything goes to plan, this will be post permanently on my YouTube channel, so don't worry if you miss anything. Um, don't worry about that, it'll be on there. So, if it was March 24th, just to give a little guess, everything was starting to close in Philadelphia, like, Urban Outfitters had closed and things like that. Things were starting to close, but we were like... But we were like, oh, you know, like, let's do the photo shoot. And then my friend Rosie, she hit me up that morning around noon, so I'd already gotten into, like, hair and makeup, and she was like, let's not do this. And I was kind of that way, too. The night before, I was like, I don't know if I should cancel, but, you know, it's just a photo shoot, like whatever, like, Rosie doesn't have it, <laughs> like, I don't know, um, so we canceled, and then we rescheduled for yesterday, plus, I know it's probably pretty hard for her to get a hold of models right now, so I was like, yeah, you know, like, I kind of would love to do it, I would love to feel that, like, independence that I'm looking for, and both of us talked about, like, doing it from a safe dif distance, so, um, so yeah, yesterday we planned, um, if you're, like, an OG subscriber, if you remember the quick and scavenger hunt, um, I hid a bunch of my pins in Philadelphia, and then, like, took pictures on Instagram, and then people could find them, and for the last pin that we hid, we also hid, so we could surprise the person who found it. Um, if you remember that video, long time ago, uh, we hid the last pin on this, like, above ground park, like, it's in the skyline, it's on, like, a high-rise building, there's a 
leafy green park. It's really cool. It's called Sierra Green. We decided to do the photo shoot there. So Philadelphia, the buses are running currently on like a um, emergency route. So a lot of the like lesser important routes are not running right now. So there was no way for me to get there. So I decided to walk and it was actually pretty cool. Um, I packed sneakers and I packed my like platform sandals to wear for the shoot because the vibe is like someone a little younger than me (laughs) um but for the most part if when you do these photo shoots and um we did a shoot together once that like got like disqualified so when we do the shoots now I try to be really conscious of like you're basically serving like um, like a gap model or like lady laughing with salad. So I was trying to be conscious of that. So you wear like black pants because you really can't wear anything that's not sold by the retailer if you're doing like any professional Instagram content, not as an influencer, but like as just a person modeling clothes, like a catalog model. But for Instagram, it's more lifestyle catalog model. And I messed that up before because I was trying to serve, like, quickened. So you wear just, like, black pants so the audience wouldn't, like... My understanding is, like, you don't want anyone to comment, like, oh, do you guys sell these pants? Because then Spencer's or Hot Topic, whoever, would be like, well, no. So you want to wear just, like, forgettable pants and, like, just black shoes, just, like that's it so there was one shoot that we did where I think I was wearing a chain like on my pants and then another one where I was wearing a bandana and I think a beanie and they didn't sell the beanie so they couldn't post the pictures but like you know it's 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 tough because then you know Customers can also post pictures and they can have a beanie on, but they're just looking for something specific. And now that I understand better, I try to like figure it all out. So I packed a black pair of pants and a brown pair of pants and um, just like some black sandals. And it was cool, but I couldn't wear a mask the whole time because it's like photo shoots and you're trying to serve... Sorry I keep saying serve, but when I'm, like, shooting, like, trying to be, like, a model and not being, like, at Quiet Cool Kid, you want to, like, ask your photographer, like, what is the photo? Like, what is the mood? Who is the girl? So, um, sometimes you're, like, serving Pickle Rick. Like, I don't, like, that, like, that's what it is, so, um... So I couldn't wear a mask because we were serving, like, good vibes, pandemic who. And it was pretty interesting not wearing a mask for, like, three hours. So if you're just joining, yesterday I did a product photo shoot for Instagram. And I'm talking about, um, like, modeling for those pictures at a safe distance, but still being outside and stuff. Um, so we went to that area and there was like a big green space and we served kind of like, we went to the college campus and there was a big green space and like bleachers and stuff. So I feel like we served like college maybe like 22 year old who is like into alternative stuff some of the t-shirts i modeled though were blank and i guess they're gonna photoshop an image on them later because i guess there's been production delays and we get a lot of um what would it be called like samples before they're out yet to do the photos so i don't even some of the, i don't even know some of the stuff but um I did, there was like a Post Malone shirt and I don't think there were any Rick and Morty shirts, 
But you know, that's like Spencer's, like that's the vibe. There was a Naruto shirt and a Cowboy Bebop shirt. So I tried to serve like, I don't know, for the Cowboy Bebop shirt, I think I'm like, um, like my hands are like this, kind of just like, dun 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 but it, you know, kind of, it might not even matter, they might not pick any of my pictures, but it's still, I don't know, it was still fun to kind of get out of the house. There was a shirt that said antisocial, so I, like, was in a corner, like, but <laughs> serving ninja. <laughs> I haven't been to Spencer's in a long time. Are they, like, chiller, hot topic? Um, they're kind of, like, the same, like, they have a lot of licensed goods, and I think they get different licensing, so, for example, like, the Cowboy Bebop shirt I modeled, I had never seen at Hot Topic before, so it's kind of just, like, another option. Um, I got, like, a, like, a pocket wallet chain from Spencer's not too long ago, and, um, yeah, they are, like, a little more adult theme. Like, my friend Rosie does their Instagram shoots, and she said that, like, she gets a lot of adult stuff that she photographs, and her mom came over to, like, help her go grocery shopping or whatever, and she's like, I don't even hide it anymore, they're just out. <laughs> um, but I haven't been in one for a while, but they also own Spirit Halloween, so they're under, like, that umbrella, kind of, like, adult alternative, maybe, like, appealing to a little bit older, and now they're trying to appeal to a little bit younger, um, which is cool, um, does Spencer sell cheap body jewelry? I think they do, they do, um, one of my s subscribers, OG, has been here for a long time, I noticed she's on their feed right now, so, they're cool, like, if you bought something from them and took a picture of yourself wearing it, I'm pretty sure they're pretty good about, like, posting customer pictures, which I like, because some brands, you know, are, like, I feel like, I mean, quick in speaking, but I feel like it's really hard to get reposted sometimes, and I feel like, uh, Spencer's is pretty cool with that stuff, like, they appreciate their customers. But after the shoot, so obviously we're shooting from like six feet apart anyway. And when you do these like outside like lifestyle pictures, basically you wear like a tank top underneath the shirt so you can keep changing shirts. So that's kind of just what we did. It was really windy out. So I think a lot of the pictures, hopefully they're like windswept and not like crazy like hair in the lip gloss. I was kind of worried about that. Um, <laughs> notoriously, we did a shoot, and Rosie had to shoot the lava lamps, and I shook one, because we couldn't get it to start, and if you shake a lava lamp, it stops working, so I broke it. I hope no one's watching this. Um, <laughs> ooh, then I'm about to post pics with my Naruto bag from there. I think they're pretty, they're pretty good about that stuff, from just my experience following them, and they're based kind of locally around here, so... Uh, you know, working with them is really easy and nice. I've, like, their back end, I have nothing but nice things to say about them. Um, I almost rented a studio space in Philadelphia to film and, like, you know, have, like, an official office. And they actually came with me to tour it. Um, and then we all, like, got a beer afterwards. They're really, really nice people. I really like working with them. And now that I understand the vibe is, like, a young cool girl and not quickened, I feel like I can do the photo shoots a lot better. I used to do modeling when I was younger and Spencer's is actually like my first paid client. <laughs> this says windswept versus being blown away. <laughs> or very blown away like Mary Poppins is a fine line. Um yeah, I'm a little nervous about that. It was so windy yesterday. And the, the park is, like, above, it's, like, in the skyline, but today I'm feeling very exhausted and a little hoarse, which I think is just from, like, not talking. And, like, Rosie's one of my best friends and I haven't seen her for, like, two months, so 
we were professional though like when we were done shooting we split ways um spencer's offered to pay for the uber but i decided to walk home again and my legs were so tired by the time i walked home like i was really happy for the exercise um rp spencer's doesn't appreciate the quick in vibe they're cool like it Honestly, though, they're just, they're hiring, they're basically, how do I say this without sounding like I hate myself? They're hiring the shell, <laughs> just the body, um, which is cool. Um, but, you know, they don't tag me as Quicken. It's a, it's like a paid photo shoot for a nice, a, a nice young lady who can kind of serve, which is literally all I can bring. Have you ever been to Bethlehem? Uh, yeah, I go pretty regularly. Uh, I've been dying to go during quarantine because there's a bakery there I really like who's doing, like, contactless, you know, service. So I hope that's in my future. I think the general public didn't appreciate the vibe. They don't get us. Yeah, if, if it was, like, yeah, I think people scrolling, I think... They scroll pretty quickly, so they just want to see somebody, like, laughing in a Spongebob meme shirt. They don't want, like, a whole story. (laughs) They don't want to have to, like, figure me out. They just want to be like, oh, do they sell that Spongebob shirt? Yeah, I'm talking about vegan treats. So good. Hey, quick, kind of random, but do you follow any vegan YouTubers? I follow Unnatural Vegan. Um... I think some of my friends that I follow are vegan, but I don't, um, I don't follow unnatural vegan. I don't follow anyone, I don't think, with vegan in their name specifically, um, but I could if you want to recommend anybody. I ordered a Spongebob face mask. I mean, we know who you are. Yeah, whenever, so I don't have Facebook, but I know Spencer's does a lot of marketing on there as well, like lifestyle marketing, and um, someone will always like tag, like DM me or something when I end up on Spencer's Facebook, which is nice. My neighbor saw me leaving the house yesterday, and she's outside like all mask and stuff, like sweeping. Um... She sweeps the street, which is really cool. And she was like, where are you going? (laughs) I was like, oh, I'm doing a shoot for Spencer's. I'm serving 22-year-old. And she was like, Spencer's gifts? (laughs) Any recommendations on neighborhoods to avoid if moving to Philly? So I'll say this. My friend Callan, my great dear good friend, I'll tell his story on behalf of him. He's really great. He has helped me film a ton of videos. He's a natural. Um, He does like some of his own photography, like with disposable cameras sometimes and stuff. And he's like naturally like, his eye, I think is just naturally cool. He sees things that are odd and weird. Um, Like there was a corner store in his neighborhood that had like a poor poorly photoshopped like bag of potato chips in the window and he photographed that and I was like dang you just see stuff um so my friend uh he he came to Philly like on a Greyhound bus once and we became friends because I had a model call and he was like can you do my hair and I was like yeah yes young man and then I didn't know he came from like five hours away And he used that as, like, a catalyst to, like, stay for the weekend and then decided he liked Philly. Um, So then he got a sublet. And a sublet is when you rent an apartment or, like, a room outside of a lease for a shorter amount of time. Usually, like, for example, if you rent an apartment but you know that you're going to go to Europe for two months but you want to move back to your apartment that you have maybe leased for a year, you would sublet it for two months to somebody. And then after two months, they would leave. You don't have to break your lease. Maybe your landlord doesn't find out. And you come back from Europe and you're like, oh, cool. So my friend Callan like took advantage of subletting, came to Philly, liked it, subletted. And um, after he subletted in South Philly, 
He then got a sublet in North Philly. And I think what neighborhood you live in really depends on your vibe. You know what I mean? Because personally, I wouldn't live in South Philly. And there's nothing wrong with it. My family is in South Philly. I have family in South Philly. Visiting him in South Philly was always really fun. He got like a night, he got like a a sublet right in the center of South Philly. So it was like really active and there was like a lot of young people and stuff like that. It was fun to visit him, but I don't personally see myself there. I've never lived in South Philly though. Um, So I think if you moved to Philly, if you're worried about committing to a neighborhood, you could do like him and just, you know, rent a spot for a month if you have that kind of time or leisure. For me, when I moved to West Philly, everybody said, don't move to West Philly. Don't move to West Philly. It's so dangerous. And some of the best times of my life happened in West Philly. So, um, I always feel like I shouldn't say what neighborhoods to avoid because I do think it's a personal choice that you have to just, like, check it out. You have to just live somewhere for a little while. So... I mean, that's my advice. And my advice is, like, don't move to South Philly because all my friends live there. I would say, you know, before you commit to maybe, like, a year-long lease or buying a house, I can't believe the amount of people who buy a house in Fishtown and move there and then don't like it um, because they heard it was such a great place. Um, I would say, you know, maybe crash on your friend's couch for a weekend, too. And just, like, feel out what you like. I really like West Philly, to be honest. Um, but that's my speech. Speaking of face masks, would you ever do a get unready with me nighttime routine? I would love to. Um. But, I... My nighttime routine isn't isn't very static, so I would have to commit to better habits. But once I do, um, I would love to share it. My nighttime routine is like filling up my humidifier and calling my cats, but that's like it. I have lived in Southwest Philly and it was not the best, not safe, etc. But then I moved to Queen Village and I love it. Um... Yeah, I've had friends live in Southwest Philly, and it sucks because there's there's also, like, not a lot of transit. And in my experience, there's not a lot of food options. It's a little bit of a food desert. Southwest Philly, in, in like, my limited opinion, would be a great place to, like, afford housing. If you wanted to, like, invest in housing, it's something pretty tolerable. But, yeah, uh, there's, not, like, not a ton of options. It's It's a good place to just, like lay roots what are your favorite vegan spots in philly i want to check out some the next time i visit um hmm uh i'm like trying to think about like what's open now too oh well tattooed moms is one of my favorite places i've i have a series on my channel um, called Vegan Cheesesteak Tour, and I tried to also highlight my favorite places. One of my favorite places, though, that I have rarely talked about is, um, it's called Palm Tree Market. If you watched my video with the Humane League, I have a video interview on their YouTube channel. There's, like, some b-roll of me at Palm Tree Market, And Palm Tree Market is a deli that has, like, some vegan options on their, like, deli menu. And it's literally, like, a deli counter. And you can be like, can I have a vegan burger? And it's not, like, a burger on the grill. They, like, microwave this, like, mushy patty. But it's so good. And they use this, like, white cheese. It's just, like, I love it so much. There's, like, two or three Palm Tree Markets in the city. And my, like, nightly routine for ever was like the long walk to palm tree market and just like getting getting like a long sandwich or like they have a cheese steak for five dollars and i mean it's made with like protein and that white cheese and it's so good 
if you could go to palm tree market and get some stuff to go and then go to a park nearby or like a bench and just eat for me that's like that would be great you know you probably with a sandwich chips and like a snapple you're probably spending like nine ten bucks and then go to the bench Ooh, palm tree i live right by him i love it sorry i'm trying to read the chat too any plans to release more slash new merch so yeah we have there's three merch designs in the works i decided to relax on the merch designs just because of you know our current situation i didn't want like merch was supposed to come out like kind of the beginning of april near my birthday and i'm really excited about the merch designs right now um they're all from people you'll recognize once they come out you'll be like oh shit um i'm really really fortunate that i have a lot of friends who are artists and um i wanted i wanted my friends and their artistry to come out and i wanted the branding to be like them wearing the shirt they designed and stuff like that like that was like really what i wanted um i just thought putting it out right now might make people anxious or feel like they have to choose and stuff like that um i also had plans to come out with my depop which is a, a second it's like a way to sell your used clothes if you're unfamiliar it's like an app um depop reached out to me to be like a featured creator on their app um for free but like it comes with some benefits like you can ask them direct questions like you have a direct line to depop and stuff so last time i had a depop few years ago it kind of crashed and burned and i was like no more depop like n not trying that again so when they reached out to me i was like okay like i'll give it another shot like all my ducks are in a row i can't really mess this up this time but again i just thought it might be a bad timing you know what i mean to put out something i know that you know not everybody like lost their job and stuff like that but i think when i one day i'll wake up and just be like okay let's do this but it's not right now <laughs> would murder for your depop and your merch it's coming um and i think that depop will be like a really great lifeline for the channel you know what i mean um that I do like a really great job of sabotaging myself and like I was I was on the phone with Balonius yesterday and I was like yeah there's like three sponsors I need to track like chase down because they never paid me but huh and he was like what are you doing chase them down and I was like eh you know I don't want to bother anybody who owes me money I like do a really great job like starving this channel for support so um the depop will be really great there's a camera i really want to buy um and when things get better i would love to branch out and do you know greater more production series and even travel my dream is to like you know callan and i like go somewhere and he films he's so brilliant so excited i actually just bought one of your designs on a hoodie and a tee today i'm so glad somebody messaged me earlier today and said that they couldn't get teespring to work and then i tried to like order one of my shirts and i couldn't get it to work either um and then and then that was it <laughs> and then i emailed teespring and they were like do you want to make hats and i was like you know what i kind of do want to make hats and then that's like all the that's where it went quick and get your money i know i know i know i'm so bad at this um sorry i'm just trying to read the chat will you be making a video on the long lost plush of the month box i should it's like right over there i think i know what's inside of it though i think um but i i should i'm just worried that like new subscribers and by new i mean like anyone in the last five years hasn't seen that series but um 
Philly or New York City tattoo convention next year? I don't think so, unless I get personally invited. And I'm not trying to sound like, um, I want a personal invite. Um, but it's, it's definitely, I need to, like, be, like, in a booth or, like, somewhere, like, in a corner or something like that. It's definitely tough for me to walk around at this point. Um, sorry about my camera. I feel like if I wipe it off, it'll stop, like, pumping. You gonna stop pumping? Like, if Mar- like, if Rose Tattoo was there and they needed an assistant, I would totally do that. Like, um, this last year, I asked some of my friends who are tattoo artists if they needed assistance. Like, I would go to a tattoo convention for that and then be like, hey, but, like, behind a booth. Walking around there, like, without anybody is just, like, kind of overwhelming for anybody. I've heard a lot of people say that it's, like, really, really overwhelming. I'm making a video on tattoo conventions, so I do have a lot of footage from previous ones, so I think I'll be okay, but I do want to talk about, like, even just what they are and what they entail. Plush of the month was iconic. Yes! Um, Heidi Kenny, she made it, I think it's only seasonally now, so there's only four a month. I, I don't have a great way to, like, display my plushes, but I got lost at the Philly convention. Yeah, it's, it's pretty, it's really big, it can be really overwhelming, and, like, this year I'm all about, like, setting personal boundaries, so, like, I'm kind of like, hey, it's, it's a little tough for me at conventions, unless I was there with friends in a, like, secure place, or tattoo convention, like, invited me, or if I could host, like, a Q&A, but... I think tattoo convention, they're more into, like, tattoo lifestyle, and, like, I couldn't do, like, a performance that they might want. I- maybe I could do some stand-up comedy. Look at me! Ha ha ha! read the chat here. Not to be emo, but I feel like I literally grew up with you. I started watching you when I was angsty 18 year old and now I'm almost 24. I love that. I'm glad you've been here for a while. Thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah. Uh, you know, I thought after I turned like 25, that was kind of it. And I just like, I just keep growing, baby. All right. I'm I'm replenishing my tea. This is just hot water that I put in like a little canteen. So I wouldn't have to get up. Can you see the smoke? Oh, I'm glad it's still hot. Doing the photo shoot yesterday, there's, like, no mirror, and it was so windy. I don't know what my hair was looking like. It was parted, if it was, like, it's a little crazy like this. I got, a, I got like, one comment on my video where I did my hair that was, like, this is not my taste. And I was, like, no, don't look at it. <laughs> this is live tea content. Dude, same. Like, Quack has really formed a big part of who I am as an adult. I'm crying. So, I'll talk- I'll talk about my fashion timeline video. Um, if you haven't seen it, I posted it yesterday. I understand it's an hour, so with that, um, it's such a big risk. Like, from the back end, what you don't see is the way YouTube works and even how Instagram works is it will show your content to, like, group A. And if group A interacts with it really positively, they like it, they comment, they interact with it, then YouTube and Instagram, they'll show it to group B. 
and group B is a little bigger. And if they like it, they'll show it to group C. And if group C goes crazy, then they're like, oh, people like this, and they'll show it to a lot of people. And if you're a smaller creator or, like, a niche creator, like, I watched this one guy who just, like, restores chairs, and he deserves everything. But, like, not everybody's gonna watch this guy restore a chair. So, I was really worried because if you can't engage group A with your video, then it'll never even get to group B, which is unfair, but the metrics seem right. Like, that makes sense. That's how videos go viral. Um, so I just, it was, I was so scared to put out an hour-long video about something, like, kind of niche, like, fashion and, like, me growing up, and it's an hour. I mean, Quibi just came out, so I'm like, what, what should I do? Should I make four-minute videos? Um, so I was really scared, but it was a project I really, I really put a lot of time into. And, uh, basically I have this hard drive from when I was a kid. That is usually in that drawer. <laughs> oh, well, you don't need to see what a hard drive looks like. I have this hard drive from when I was a kid and it's like this big. I have a bigger hard drive that's this big. So I have this hard drive. And for the most part, it has, like, every picture ever. Um, I was asked to leave my home when I turned 18, and I broke into my house and wiped the computer and put it on the hard drive. So I have basically my childhood hard drive from ages, like, 14 to 18 on this hard drive. And then, you know, from after that, I had, like, shitty laptops with no memory. So I'd been dumping, essentially I'd been dumping onto this hard drive until now. Now I have true technology. Um, so it can be tough to revisit, but also some stuff isn't on there. It's corrupted. Um, I had, like, a college boyfriend who asked me to delete, like, pictures of me with my ex, which sucks, because I should have, like, I, I feel really bad about it. I don't, I, it actually makes me feel awful thinking about that, because these pictures are so great. So, so Angela says, hey Amanda, I absolutely love the video you released yesterday, and I could tell you put a lot of effort into it. Thank you so much. It was so much, it's, it's a lot. So, I started putting together that video in, like, February, and although I go through it kind of like a slideshow, um, I actually curated all of those pictures into a slideshow. And let's look at my drawer one more time. A lot of the pictures were also from this iPod touch. And getting... And I believe this is a bootleg iPod touch because there's nothing on the back. I don't know. So, if you don't know, Apple stopped supporting any of their old software. So, the hoops I had to go through to get, like, any of the files off of this, that was crazy. Um, and even that was a trip, because there's, like, old iMessages on here. I got really caught up in reading, like, you know, old emails I used to send to myself and stuff like that. Like, it was, it was, it was really crazy. So, I definitely put myself, I like, I was pretty immersed in that project for a while. And the last night, um, my buddy is training to become a yoga teacher. So, we all do yoga for free at his house so he can practice. The last night he hosted yoga before quarantine, I said no to, like, finish that fashion video. And then, like, I, I was like, oh my god, you sacrificed yoga for this video? And then you never even put the video out? But honestly, I had to, I had to get to a place where I could stand behind that video, edit it, uh, like, receive it, like, publicly receive people watching it, and, uh, it's tough. 
when <laughs> when you make something funny, the thing you give back to people is comedy or entertainment. When you make a tutorial, you're giving people education. So when you make this video, you're not sure, you know. So I was just, uh, I was, I was scared to see how people would re receive it. And like I mentioned, like, if you can't impress group A when you, when you make a video, then it never gets to group B. And that's tough because people will say, hey, I, I didn't see your new video. I'm subscribed to you. But also YouTube will essentially punish you. You know, if you make a video and a bunch of people hate it and unsubscribe, the algorithm says, hey, people didn't like that. I'm not, you're, you're not going to group B. So it's, it's tough. Um, YouTube thankfully sends me to a ton of YouTube classes, but then once you know the backings, it just adds an, another level of anxiety to your production or like another wall, another hurdle that you were essentially naive to beforehand. You just put out stuff and you don't know about group A and group B and all this stuff and monetization. You're like, hey, look at this tattoo on my back. But um, it's cool. But putting it out, it was, it was definitely, it was really, I really enjoyed it. I really, and it was received, I think. It's been really special. It's been really cool. Um, I don't know if it's just me, but I'm finding lately I'm liking the longer videos a lot more from most creators. It's nice to just put on something while doing stuff and not thinking about changing it. I definitely agree. When Quibi, if you don't know what Quibi is, it's a short form video streaming service and the videos are short, like I believe eight minutes, but they're like professional videos like Chrissy Teigen has a show and um, Steven Spielberg, I think, has a show. And TikTok is so popular. So to for me as a creator, when I'm like strategizing, I mean barely. It's not like me and a bunch of uh, other me's at a table like, we need to synergize. Usually it's like me at eight o'clock, like in the shower, like, huh, that would be a good idea. <laughs> um, so you see like Quibi and TikTok being favored by people and it sends a signal that people want shorter content, but I don't personally want shorter content. I've been watching a lot of um, Vice, Vice documentary series stuff, Vice in general, and I don't even click on their stuff that's less than four minutes. I'm like 25 and up Vice media. Um, but yeah, the chat said that Qu Quibi failed. It, of course it failed. And I didn't, I wasn't into it. You know, I knew I wasn't going to download it and I don't like short form content. For me, I'm the generation that grew up watching TV, half hour segments, and, you know, felt underrepresented in my interests. So I went to YouTube, but I still grew up watching 30 minute things. Younger kids, Gen Z, didn't grow up watching that stuff. So you could understand that their interests are different, but mine aren't. I called Valonius before I post that video. I'm like, shit, it's an hour. And he's like, I watch that. So it's definitely, I, I think for older generation, but I hate to put that blanket on that because that's just like, if I had to, if I had to understand it, I would say that, but. So Cupie Pie says, you introduced me to Joanna Newsome and she changed my life. I got a time as a symptom tattoo last summer. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. I would love to see that. That is so great. I almost posted a picture of Joanna Newsom this morning. I was just thinking about her. Uh, trivia. Um, Andy, San Andy Sandberg, his favorite movie is Princess Mononoke, Studio Ghibli. And Joanna gifted him a cell, a original animation cell from that movie. So there is a literal cell from Princess Mononoke, Studio Ghibli, in Joanna's household. Also, you know, safe to assume she's watched it as well. So we have a new channel member, Sheepish Bree, and I, wasn't there one more? And hey, it's Dom. Welcome. For my channel members this month, I'm going to make a video where I recommend YouTubers that I watch unconventional or un 
unexpected. Like I said, like one of my favorite YouTube channels is the guy who restores chairs. And I also like um, Canadian <laughs> broadcast television. I love, I love Canadian investigative journalism. I don't know what to say. I love it. Any good docu-series you'd recommend? Um, how do I say this without, like, getting put on a list? Um, I, so Vice Media has this, one of their first videos they ever made was a Vice's Guide to North Korea. And so, if you don't know anything about that, um, it's a, it's a closed off country. It's very homogenized and they don't let outside influence come in. Like if you were to visit there, you can't bring books or anything like that. They keep the entire country really locked down in that way. So what interests me about documentaries exploring it is that it, to me, has that same feel almost as like a dead mall or like an abandoned city or like an abandoned town and in no way do I support the regime I hope you guys understand that but I do find interest in the people who are able to go there and explore it um Americans may not go you can't go if you have an American passport but a lot of the guys from Vice are Canadian which I didn't know um because I was like up late at night like how'd they get there but they're, like, they're Canadian dudes. Um, so, that was pretty interesting to me. Vice has a, so, uh, North Korea is really into, like, American basketball in a very commercial sense. Like, they like the Globetrotters who do the, like, basketball tricks and stuff in the Chicago Bulls, like, 90s basketball era. Um, so there is a, a Vice short documentary, 45 Minutes, where they're invited to do a basketball game and it's pretty cool the correspondent is like white guy with all tattoos and stuff and it's really silly to see him in North Korea but you see um it's really just uh interesting so that's kind of what I've been into I've been into a lot of documentary series that I feel like kind of show you something a tad obscure or something you may not see especially because American journalists can't go there so it was just interesting to me do you watch YouTube more than TV after about 10 solid years of being on YouTube more than TV I find it hard to relate to friends who wants to talk about shows, almost like watching YouTube is something illicit. Yeah, um, I definitely get, get that. A lot of my friends who I do get along with are very into YouTube, so that's easy for me. I can just say Shane, and they know what I'm talking about for the most part, but, um, so I have, I have this one OG who I met years ago. I was at, oh, I hope he's not watching. I should like check to make sure he's not watching. Okay, I don't think so. I have this one friend who I met, um, I'll just say at a grocery store a couple years ago. I had no idea who he was, but I was holding like a composition book with like doodles and stuff on it. And he stopped me and he asked if I was an artist and he was so cool. So I was like, what? And he like did a sketch in my book. And I had worked on South Street at the time and like ran back to my store and I was like, do you know who this is? Look at this. And a couple of my friends recognized it and I still have the sketchbook. I'm like, I like guard it with my life. So, um... I've ran into him, like, a couple more times since then, and I'm always like, how are you? And I've seen that he's, like, been to thrift stores. Like, I, he's, like, so, he's, like, so cool. Like, super, like, old head, like, cool Philadelphia hip-hop, like, all that. Um, so he actually messaged me last night, and he was like, I watched uh, your video that you posted. And I was like, D- don't. 
don't look at me, please. Um, I was like, I really, I was like, I think I, I swear, I think I said like, oh, you didn't have to do that. <laughs> um, so he was like, I watched, I'm like actually red. I was, he was like, I watched your video. He said, now I understand why you have all these followers on Instagram. He was like, you just, is this what YouTube is all about? And, like, seeing the opportunity to, like, talk about anything other than me. I was like, oh, yeah, you gotta watch YouTube. Like, it's great. Um, it's the only thing I watch. You can really find your interests catered to. And you can find, like, a core group of, like, five or six YouTubers you really like. And it's the only thing you need. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, there's really people not watching YouTube. I was very surprised. I was like, damn, you don't watch the chair restoration guy? <laughs> okay. What, you just buy new chairs? Um, Rebecca, thanks for joining the channel members. And Caroline, thanks for being here. Enjoy, um, now you can unlock emojis. I think there's an Ethan one. Enjoy that. TV is 90% garbage anyway. Yeah, the last YouTube thing I went to, I had to stay in a hotel. And I put on the TV and it was Comedy Central, and I guess they have the license to the office now, and it was all chopped up, like, half of the episode wasn't there, and there were so many commercial breaks, and all the commercials are for medicine. I was like, what the hell? I can't watch this. This is upsetting. Medicine? Half of an episode of The Office? I don't even know how to talk to my friends who- Oh, there's that- there's those Ethan emojis. I don't even know how to talk to my friends who don't watch YouTube. I just started telling them my friends when I'm talking about videos they don't understand because of the concept. I forgot about the mini dryer. <laughs> yeah, luckily- luckily, I mean, um, my friend Justine isn't really into YouTube, like, culture as much as I am, but at the same time, you know, she's also not watching TV. I know she's, like, watching anime, but it's definitely cool. You Sometimes you want to just, like, recommend something to somebody. Like, if she's into this anime, I could be like, oh, this YouTuber explained this thing really well. I think you should watch it. But I, I that's what I really like it for. And yeah, I do make connections with YouTubers, but even on the base level, I could be like, hey, did you watch this thing on North Korea? <laughs> completely unrelated but what kind of webcam are you using i'm so sorry it keeps popping in and out i know it wants me to turn this light on um but i'm using a logitech hd webcam 1080p i think this was like the 40 dollar one i don't see myself spending more on that have you ever seen grace neutral's documentary se series on south korean beauty standards i recommend it 100 percent yes there is one episode that I cried during and I called Morgan and we or her or I, we were going to react to it, but I think it was done so well that I just didn't think there was anything I could fucking say about it, but I think it was done so well. I'd been following Grace for, since Tumblr, since, I don't know, her first weed cigarette. So it was really cool to me that they found someone who belonged in the situation so well and like credit where credit is due they do that really well like all their correspondence are very unique um so it's it's really cool um but if anyone else hasn't seen it it's it's so 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 good 37 hour long playlist of youtubers explaining end of evangelion <laughs> 37 hours isn't enough There's this, like, two-hour video that is, um, Evangelion Timeline Explained, and I started watching it, and I felt like I was seeing spoilers because I was like, damn, some stuff really went over my head. So I turned it off. Though TV-wise, I always love Scrubs. What am I watching Scrubs on? Isn't- it's gotta be on Netflix or something. Scrubs is- Scrubs is on something. The dryer got discontinued. The, the icon? No. 
It could never. Unless you mean in real life. You can buy mine off of me. It's still in my basement. My dowry. Oh, it's on Hulu? <laughs> hey, Quicken, do you still think you have bad luck? I guess I used to use bad luck almost as like a, um, kind of as a way to define my lifestyle. Kind of like I felt like there's like a, there's like a Catholic saying for like, this is out of my control. And I felt like bad luck was the way I could say that. I don't know. I went to Sunday school so long ago. But I felt like bad luck had the same feeling. As if to be like, some things are out of my control. So I felt like saying I had bad luck was the same, the same thing to me. And... Like, I still, I still kind of live with that. Like, I have a giant tattoo of a devil and started, like, collecting devil flash, which I'm, like, really into. So, I think I kind of turned that, like, things are out of my control into just, like, they're, you know, the devil made me do it. I talked about it once in a video how I feel about that, but I kind of love the idea, not of, like, I'm not saying, like, Satan, but I love the idea that in, there are cultures that are like, you know, evil exists as an entity and you can scare it away or you can like accept it or you can live alongside it like it's a thing, like it's, a, it's like your bro. Um, and I like identifying with that. So bad luck. Um, like I, I still exactly live that way. But I think when I say now bad luck, I think it's a little discouraging. And I think it makes me sound unappreciative. So in that way, I started like calling it good luck. Because I feel like in that way, if good luck exists, then bad luck must also exist in that way. So in that way, I feel like um, I can appreciate things a little better and it's more understood um because when I say like oh I have bad luck and then like my grandma makes me like a nice lettuce and tomato sandwich I'm like well clearly not dude but um I feel like bad luck is an Aries thing well what can I even do as a soon-to-be 28-year-old non-binary person, I cringe to join TikTok. I feel way too old, haha, but my younger sisters are on it, and it keeps me in the loop a bit. Um, I feel the same way. I, I, I would love to make a TikTok because I, like, I have this, like, folder on my phone of, like, skits SNL could never, like, and I feel like I could exercise them on TikTok, but I don't know. It's tough, but I don't think not, I don't think your, your identity should keep you off of there, but I do think it's fair for you to feel like, I don't have the energy for this, at, like, whatever capacity it is. You could be 19 and be like, I don't have the energy for TikTok. Um, also, TikTok is pretty toxic, so if you don't want that in your life as well, like, I think that that's very valid. Uh, Morgan is on TikTok and thriving, which is great, because I called her the other night, like, feeling so bad. I was filming a video and, like, turned off the camera and I called Morgan. I was like, I'm, I'm over it. She's on TikTok and I told her, like, I should delete Twitter. Like, I go on there and I feel like shit. Um, and she said, like, on TikTok, she's found a place to, like, feel like that she's expressing herself. So, I guess you go on there and you can make whatever you want of it, which I think is really cool. Um, I haven't taken that plunge yet, but at the same time, uh, someone says TikTok is a fad. Yeah, you can, if you are afraid of being exposed to certain things on the internet, I think boundaries, setting boundaries, it, that's great. Some people are going to be on TikTok. Some people are going to be on Facebook. What? You know.
Dang, just noticed the vintage Quicken photo in the bottom corner of the live stream. I'm on desktop. Oh yeah, I think if you click on that little thing, it subscribes to you. I don't know. It's, it's like a very old feature of YouTube. Spill the tea on your Hot Topic Secret Santa. Um... I, I definitely did. I posted a video on my second channel about the Secret Santa program I was in through Hot Topic and I got a pee pee poo poo gift. I was cleaning up my office the other day and uh, John got home from work and opened the door and he was like, can I throw that out? And it was my present. And you know me, I'm a hoarder. I was like, it doesn't deserve to be in the trash. I just don't want it. But you know, maybe they could go on my Depop for 10 bucks. But, um, I still like Hot Topic. They've been having, like, I don't know, some, uh, their influencer team, I think, has been affected by the pandemic. Someone asked why I didn't save the last stream, and the internet was, like, really, really choppy, so it, ended the stream in a bunch of different ways and I just used my better judgment because it would post like this. It would post like a bunch of videos and not just one and I don't think anyone would be happy about needing to watch seven videos where most of them are me like apologizing for the stream sense like strength but I talked with my internet provider this morning and everything seems really good. Ever get tired of being pigeonholed as a tattooed person, especially on YouTube? I try to do pretty good with uh, taking myself out of that. And that is scary because I know if I just dedicate my life to making tattooed content that there's an audience for it. But... I've said this before, I've said it throughout my YouTube career that I'm more multi-dimensional than that and I have much more interests than that and I like wearing tattoos and a lot of my friends are tattooed people um, and I've been getting tattooed for a very long time but on YouTube it's definitely interesting. Lately I've been calling myself like an alternative content creator or like alternative lifestyle content creator which I feel like is like saying tattoo creator, but, um, I don't know. I do, a, I try my best to not get pigeonholed, so I think, I think I'm okay there. Gen Z are multitaskers with shorter attention spans, so that's why TikTok is easier for them to absorb more content in a shorter amount of time, but as most millennials, I prefer longer content. Um, Definitely, like, from the market research I've consumed, I've seen that as well. So, yeah, that's why I was scared to put out an hour-long video. I feel like your image is definitely moving away from that which uh, you're posting lately. It's been smooth from my perspective. Awesome. <laughs> it's great to hear, you know. It's really scary to pivot out of something and my channel suffered for a really long time i'm glad that i have like i said a, a really great supportive audience like you guys and my channel members definitely like literally put food on the table when my channel was demonetized 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 um we did figure out that my channel was shadow banned and i deleted like my scarification videos and some of my body mod videos were like Maybe some videos where I'm, like, cursing or drinking a beer. I don't think that was very common, but, like, out of an abundance of safety. And I believe since then, I think it's fair to say that that shadow ban may have been lifted because, you know, raise your hand if you're a newer subscriber. Um, on this channel for a while, I was making tattooed content, which fell out of favor on, on YouTube's algorithm. And, you know, Pepsi doesn't want to run ads on stuff like that, but then they hire Post Malone as their spokesperson, so... I mean, I'm confused, but, um, it's been, yeah, it's been a really scary transition, so it's been 
Like, I, I thank you guys with my whole life for the support. Weird they don't tell you about being shadow banned. You think they give you a warning or something. So, you probably heard the phrase bad actors. And in a sense, bad actors are people who manipulate algorithms. So, YouTube has to be really protective of their algorithms so nobody exploits it. And there's the potential for me to exploit it. There's the potential for... There's even the potential for me to complain on Twitter and then someone see what I'm complaining about and use it as an exploit. I'm going to put that light back on. I'm sorry I'm wearing sweatpants, but my tummy hurt earlier. I didn't want to put pressure on it. I don't know if anybody else wears like really high-waisted stuff, but it's like my whole wardrobe now. And when I put like a waistband, like where all my guts are, all day it makes my belly hurt. <clears throat> but yeah, uh, bad actors was a pretty big problem on YouTube for a minute and essentially still is where any algorithms take place. If you ever see someone exploiting an algorithm in a really annoying way, um that's that's what it is so youtube's really protective over their algorithms so people can't exploit it but it also makes it so people within inside it that need it also can't openly talk about it and unfortunately like there have been youtubers who have received insider information and then immediately told everyone and it's not fair for me to say unfortunate because everyone else communally learns when stuff like that happens, but at the same time, in theory, so do the bad actors. So, I don't know. Josie is a new member. Welcome. I just wanted to say, especially since your last video about your style journey, that I consider you one of my style inspirations. I keep, I keep trying to talk myself into wearing a rolled bandana around my neck. Um, one thing I do here, you don't even, if you want to do like, um, like a gentle, here's a bandana. So you can tie it around and I'll tie it up high like cowboy. Pull it down and then I, uh, tuck it into my shirt. I feel like even that is kind of subtle. I mean, not with this bunch right here. Live bandana content. But I feel like even this is like kind of like work it out a little bit. But even that, like, you know, it, it's not, it's not really extreme. Like, you know, we're just chilling. This doesn't even look different now. Well, it came untied. Just do one of these and then like just own it. And that'll be your uh, your quick and style. Like, see, it's almost, you're like, oh, what is that, a shirt? What? Been watching for years, but I'm usually a lurker. Thanks for being the best. Thank you. Thanks for being here. To think that I'm style inspiration, not to like toot my own horn, but it, it's pretty, like I said at the end of that style video, my friend had texted me and said, oh, I thought I saw you because I saw someone dressed like you. And uh, I was really, like, that wasn't fake. I was really like, well, I am just wearing what everybody else is wearing. Uh, you know, everybody's wearing band t-shirts now and everyone has like a, I don't know, like a Rolling Stones vintage t-shirt. But 
it's cool to, I don't know, it's, it's cool that it is different, and then, I guess, to me, it feels like it fits in, so, it's really cool that you guys dig it. We, <laughs> my grandma and I were out at a thrift store, and, um, one of my subscribers, like, we shopped, and then at the end, my subscriber worked there, and she's like, hey, like, I didn't want to bother you, but what's up? And I was like, hey, like, and then we started to chat, and it was my grandma's first experience um, seeing me meet one of my subscribers, so she was like, what? <laughs> so my grandma was like, oh, is that one of your friends? And I was like, well, yeah, kind of. And then she was like, you guys were wearing the same outfit. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, you know. <laughs> We dressed the same. It was it was really cool. Um, it was it was a bit surreal for my grandma, but proud. I was happy for her to see it. Um, my grandparents my grandparents very recently watched one of my YouTube videos. My uncle, my grandmother's biological son, him and I have been on the phone. Um, you know, we got kind of close with my grandpa's health. It's nice to talk to each other because I live closer. So him and I have been on the phone with quarantine and stuff, and he watched Tiger King, and I was like, oh yeah, we got something to talk about. He was like, you should make a video on Tiger King. So when I made my Tiger King video, I sent sent it to him. It was kind of that bridge into like, I do this weird thing for a living, here you go. And like I, in the video, I said that he requested it, and that we had been getting close and stuff, so it was really cool. It was like, um, you know. I don't have to describe it. <laughs> it was cool because um, it felt like a little bonding thing. But my uncle is older than me. He's on Facebook. So he shared the video on Facebook. And my grandma's sister, she watched it. So then my grandma watched it because she was like, is this like a big thing? Like, what is this? And at the end of the Tiger King video, I'm like shirtless in my backyard drinking a LaCroix like, pretending it's a beer, like, trying to be, like, white trash, and I'm like, oh, no, when I do this for you guys, it's fun, but for my family, I feel like it should be more posh, and, like, I don't know, for my uncle, you know, it's fun, but for my, my grandma's sister, and my grandma, and I was, I was a little nervous for that, but, um, my grandma, since then, my grandma has, like, clicked around and watched a few more videos, but, yeah, when we went to the thrift store and my subscriber was talking to me and my grandma, like, bore, bared witness to it, it was, it was a little surreal. But it was a look. <laughs> I had a lot of fun with it. It was a lot of fun. Even making that video, the little, like, Tiger King song, I actually edited the video and then came up with that, like, a day later and put it in. Um, it, was, it was really cool. Whenever my mom saves an Instagram photo, I'm like, that was for the stranger's mother. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> so my grandpa, I'm assuming, went to like a CVS with his cell phone and had saved a picture of me from the internet. And my idea of it is that he just gave the clerk his phone and was like, how do I get the picture out? So there's like a printed picture of me. If you follow me on Instagram, I think I posted it in my Instagram stories around Christmas. It was just like a printed selfie essentially so i'm like oh my god just ask me for a photo i will produce one does she stand i my grandma's a pretty big stan she'll say stuff like uh you know it's like a like i trust you it's like you grew up and you did it stuff like that i'm like yeah tell me again my dad screenshot an Instagram selfie and framed it. Yeah, imagine. Imagine being like, damn, my daughter served. 
My granddaughter did that. <laughs> Can you recommend any good coffee brands? I tried to blend from Bones Coffee and they were good, but I'd like to try more. Unfortunately, I drink from like local, local places. There's a brand from Lansdale that I've been drinking that I buy from Whole Foods. I like local stuff. I bought a coffee grinder, so I've just been grinding my beans. Since you can't use the coffee grinder at Whole Foods anymore, or else you'll catch the pandemic. <laughs> my mom has printed selfies of mine. You look so gorgeous. Mom, that's Facetune. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god, the flavor. Do you still have a P.O. box? Yes, I just I just renewed it the other day for a grand total of $1 million. But I love my P.O. box. When I'm an old lady in the twilight of my days, I'm still going to use it because I love all the people at my P.O. box. Um, and I have box number two at my P.O. box, which means I was the second person to get a P.O. box at my P.O. box. And I, the other day I said that, I was like, I realize my box number means two. He was like, yeah, you're like family here. I was like, holy shit. All right, renew me. Only a million is steel. Honestly, yeah. Yeah, I still have a P.O. box. Um, I keep it kind of chill, though. When I first opened it up to everybody, it was really nice. The company was really great, especially since I just moved into my apartment and I was all alone. Um, but it, it is, it's a little hard to keep up with because uh, I couldn't like reply to everybody and that makes me feel guilty. So now like I use it to like get mail and like get stuff from brands. And then I do share it, I think with my channel members on one of the older posts in the community tab, it's on there drop the address like I said it's a little tough uh for my sake I know I feel guilty when I can't reply to all the letters I feel bad when I sorry I was gonna sing stan lyrics but I don't want to get claimed but I don't want to be Mrs. Too Good to write my fans I sent you a Blu-ray a while back of Kubo in the two strings. Did you ever receive it? Yes. So we just, it's so funny. We just, um, for my birthday, we split a PS4. Is that the one that's out? PS5? PS4. Sorry. <laughs> Old lady. We split one and it has a Blu-ray player so we can finally watch it. It's like the first thing I said. So I'm very excited. Before, uh, we didn't have a Blu-ray player, um, I was like, fuck, can we even watch this, like, on my computer? So, I'm, yes, I have it, and I've, I've been saving it this whole time. I'm very excited. I actually told my grandma about it, too, because she loves animated stuff, so. What are you growing in your room? So, this isn't a grow light. This is just, like, a studio light that I feel like, um, gives me dimension off of my wall, because I'm, like, the same color as my wall, I feel like, on camera. So I like to bounce that in the background. These are just standard plants. Um, I could name them. It'll just take me a long time to remember. My brain is an egg. That's a Z, Z plant. That's a ivy. That's a cactus. Um, that, it's called like a pink woman I don't I don't know don't make me name them when people ask me about my plants I'm like oh my god no they're just the green please don't make me talk about them don't expose me I don't know as much as you when Jenna Marbles did her plant tour and she knew every single name of every single plant I was like <laughs> okay I just have the like thermometer thing that you stick in a plant and it'll say if it needs to be watered or not. And I'm like, yeah, it's a green thumb. Look it up. 
a resident of Curtis Town here too. What did I miss? A sapling. These are my saplings. They're all going to be orange trees. Do you have any other artists you'd recommend that has the same feel as Joanna Newsom? You totally got me into her. So hear me out. Hear me out and trust me. Bjork. You must, you must listen to Bjork. My, I, I love Bjork. I actually wrote a video about loving Bjork and there was a part of it where I did a cover song and I abandoned the whole thing. But I do love Bjork enough to publicly embarrass myself. Bjork is so, so good. Bjork is so good. So a, a brief history on Bjork. Bjork was in a punk band um, in the late 80s and then became her own singer. And she has a really unique way that she sings however she damaged her vocal cords very very badly because she was not um properly trained she has this very beautiful style and if you know anything about joanna newsome she used to yodel i mean i'm a peasant there's probably a different term in my opinion in my listening i call it yodeling Joanna used to yodel in her songs and she had to stop because she had to get surgery on her throat and she can't make those same sounds anymore. Bjork, this happened to Bjork as well. So now Bjork, her, her songs like have a lot of accompaniment. They're like uh, very electronic and very cool. But even if you watch Bjork's old music videos from the 90s or just give Bjork any chance, my, my Twitter profile was Bjork lyrics for like 500 years. I just changed it to Radiohead lyrics. But Bjork, Bjork is so interesting in her lyric, her, just her composition, the way her music is developed is so, so, so good. If you ever watch her live before her throat surgery, you actually see her like pump this music. Like her mouth is an instrument. She's brilliant. Bjork is so good. Let me pull up an album that I think you could start with. Um, she came out with a new album in 2017, and it was really, really, really good. <laughs> My library is like Elvis Christmas songs at Bjork. Send me to jail. Um, Army of Me is a good start, but so Utopia by Bjork. It um, it looks like this, where she kind of looks like a mushroom face. It's a really cool place to start. Actually, I have a better album to recommend from Bjork. Bjork has this album that was all remixed by people. So it's Bjork came out with an album that was really good. Um, and then two years later, it was all remixed by like electronic music musicians and stuff like that. And I found that I really liked that album. And it was a great way to get into Bjork. Because you're like, oh, I really like these remixes. Like, if you like, really like the Gorillas or Radiohead, or even just like like one song from them, was Bastards the remix or Biophilia? Okay, so Bastards by Bjork is a great start, and then you can go back a year and listen to Biophilia, which is not remixed, and then be like, damn, I'm really into that. Um. And then once you get into those more palatable commercial music, I think from there you can go both ways. You can go 90s Bjork or you can listen to her much newer stuff and really, really like it. Because I think after Bastards, she went with that like electronic. It's so good. I saw Bjork live to brag and uh, her... She also has a huge stage presence, just like costumes and, and you can follow her makeup artist on Instagram and he's fucking, they're fucking cool. And it's just like, if you like Joanna, you, you will like Bjork. You'll like her for all of the same reasons as Joanna. 
same fantastical themes, same, like, a lot of harp music, even. Um, I love Bjork so much, and I always recommend Bjork if you like Joanna. They've been compared to each other as well. I don't know if they know each other. Joanna's too busy hanging out with Grimes. Do you watch RuPaul's Drag Race at all? There's an episode where a queen named Katya impersonates Bjork, and it was amazing. Um, I will. There's there's a lot of seasons. I do, not to be basic, but I do really like Trixie Mattel, and I just watched her documentary on Sunday, but haven't watched too much RuPaul's Drag Race because there's a lot of it, and I didn't catch it from the beginning, and now I'm like, 14 seasons, that's tough for me. Are your cats from a shelter? Um, no, they're all from outside. They're all from, like, like a one-block radius from my house. They're all strays. Have you watched Dragula? I, th- I did. Is it, like, more documentary style? Because I did. Sorry, I'm reading the chat. Trixie and Katya have a song, have a show on YouTube that's so good. Yes, I really like it. I really like their back and forth. It reminds me of Valonius and I. Thoughts on Grimes? Grimes is so good. Grimes is so good. Grimes really goes crazy. And I just got John into Grimes, which has been a pleasure. We were like, it was like five years ago, and I put on, what album was it? I put it on in the car ride home, and I felt like John thought it was like some new agey kind of like girl power stuff. I feel like he wasn't into it. And then we listened to it again recently, and he was like, oh, I've been listening to this at work. I was like, I'm gonna kill you. It was Visions. Grimes baby name. I saw a tweet that was like, when I see this name, no sound happens in my head. And I cried. (laughs) It's true. I don't even know how to kind of pronounce it. But the thing about Grimes is you knew that baby was going to be named that. It's named after like one of her new songs on her album. Not to say it. One of her new songs is like just named that. The first day I saw the baby's name, I was like, oh, what is that? Track six? Cool. And then everyone was like, no, it's pronounced Kyle. Like, what? It's just silence. I'm dead. (laughs) It's pronounced X Ash Art Angel. Hmm. I'm surprised that Grimes, who seems like the most underground artistic entity, got with one of the gods of capitalism. Very weird. There's something about it that makes sense to me. (laughs) And when I saw, like, Grimes and Elon on, like, a red carpet, I was like, damn. I think it's still New Age because they're not married. And I feel like she'll get bored and leave. She'll be like, ah, it's time for me to go. And she'll hold her baby like this, like a like a football, but it like, it'll be fine. It's pronounced (sighs) fucking dead. It makes sense because they're both actually robots. So have you ever read Grimes' bio on Apple Music? I don't think she's a robot. I think she like, like if sniffing paint was a person, Yo, catching you live is a first for me. Yeah. Thanks for being here. We're just chilling tonight. I have my blankie. I actually put it over there when I changed the lights. And now I'm like, my blankie. An article said Grimes and Elon don't agree on their baby's name (laughs) pronunciation. 
Wasn't he on Joe Rogan's podcast, like, talking smack? I don't know. That's like, maybe this is the abuse talking. I feel like that's like love to me. If my boyfriend was like, yeah, she just named our baby like something crazy, am I right? But like, she's cool. I'm like, thanks, baby. Have you ever read her bio on Spotify? I don't know if it's the same one, but she talked about smoking crack. Yeah, yeah, that's the bio. And it's written in like third person or something or like from the point of view of like God or a light bulb or something. I don't think I've ever listened to Grimes. Grimes is really, I really like Grimes. Um, She has, so you, how do I say it? Grimes grew on me but I like force fed myself Grimes because I had a good feeling about her like five years ago. I was like, oh, this is the wave. I think I saw like, I don't know, a music video or something. I was just like, this makes me feel. Her bops are a good place to start. Don't feel cliche about it because once you listen to her, like her hits a lot, you want more. And I feel like that's where I got to. I don't know the Azalea Banks story, though. I have I have not ever looked it up. Yesterday, Rosie asked me about Azalea Banks, and I was like, she goes, but I'm so scared. Elon Musk is a giant question mark. <clears throat> I like that Grimes, um, like, hired her brother to do, like, a lot of her stuff, too. My dream is to, like, hire my brother to do something. Although he's like, it's not chaotic neutral. What's the one below it? He's that. Grimes is oblivion is popular on TikTok. Ice Pack, Poppy, and Jasmine Bean are really good, but their music is more edgy. I had Mars Argo stuck in my head last night, and it felt so good. Chaotic evil. Oh. He's not evil. He's, like, chaotic. He's not lawful good. He is lawful. Chaotic lawful is that... Chaotic evil is below neutral. Lawful evil. Hmm. That makes it seem like it has intent. My brother's just like... How do you say this? He's like... I don't know. Uh, He called me, like, out of the blue and asked if I would, um... Co-sign a motorcycle with him. He's that. I'm like, you can't ride a motorcycle. He's like, no, 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 no. I learned how, but I need a co-signer. <laughs> Chaotic good. Yes, that's what it is. Pure chaos. His intentions are good. He's a good man, but he's nuts. Quicken, can I say how much I love the Style Evolution video? It was so touching and made me look back on my own fashion choices and reconnect with the girl that made them. I'm so excited about that. I'm really happy. A lot of people commented um, that I was really nice to myself and like didn't call myself cringy or anything like that. And um, One, it's not really a word in my dialogue, but two, like I can only get like very excited for like those building blocks and like that foundation. Um, I can like feel like unpretty and stuff in that TLC, but yeah, I don't know. There's something about having that youth that I feel excited about because uh, you know, I I was telling Valonius, there are parts in the video I didn't think would translate because there are parts in the video where I'm like, we traded DVDs because there was no way to exchange, like, information with one another and, like, 
I don't know. There, there, you had to do that. And there was no Pinterest. So you really had to go up to a girl at the show and ask how she leper printed her undercut. And she would say, with Q-tips. And you go, oh, that's great. Um, and now I would rather die a thousand deaths than talk to somebody. So I really wanted to, like, I was really proud of that girl just organically. I was like, damn, you figured it out. <laughs> I love positive self-talk. It was great. It was it was really cool. Honestly, cringe culture is dead. My illustrator friend and I were looking at old art from DeviantArt days and honestly, it happened. <laughs> yeah, um I don't know if anyone watches ContraPoints, but she did an episode on cringe, I think two days ago. If you uh, want to dig into the philosophy of cringe, I thought it was really well made. I actually like watched it twice, so. <clears throat> that video just made me feel a lot. Um. Yeah, like I, like I said, there's a part at the end where I start crying and I cut it out because I've been really affected by seeing people cry <laughs> lately. Um, but yeah, it was really tough. There's a part, like, it, none of it's, I, I mean, you guys know me, none of it's fucking acted, but there is a part organically where I, I, I literally see from, like, the next day when I stopped dressing sexy. And I have a video on my YouTube channel, but it's like five or six years old. So it's it's done it's done prematurely because I'm not a good editor yet and I'm still not a very great storyteller online yet. Which is a skill you develop. You know, you can be an honest and sincere person and still have stage fright. It doesn't mean that you're not a sincere person. It just means that that's tough. So when I made that video a few years ago, um, now I can sum it up in a few sentences. I wore a navy blue mini skirt to Aldi, um, like the first day of spring or summer, and a guy from the parking lot followed me in and waited until I was in between two aisles and, you know, et cetera, et cetera. I'm not trying to bring anybody down, but, um, I just felt like really ob obviously targeted because he followed me in. And then I felt really exposed because he had access to my body and stuff. Um, and then immediately after, I stopped dressing that way. So it was crazy to me going through those photos because I kind of feel like, I don't know, like calling people like a potato and stuff is like a thing. And like, I felt like my style like quickly was like, um, I stopped dressing that way. And I started dressing like a potato. But really, really, it was because of an action. And I've become a lot more in tuned with, like, what trauma does to us. Like, through a lot of self-evaluation. And I, I must self-evaluate because, like, you know, 2017 was really tough for me. And then things got better. So you want to understand that leap. So it's taken me a couple of years to even be able to identify trauma and not think that trauma is like uh, when you uh, broke your elbow a couple of years ago, now it hurts when it rains. Oh, uh, tra trauma. Or like a traumatic event. You're like, oh, 9-11? But then it's hard to understand that we ourselves can take trauma and in the same way like a broken arm, you still have that, like, tissue and bruise and, like, s scar. Um, and although I'm able to identify that better in my relationships and stuff like that, discovering it in my mannerisms and the way I dress was unexpected because after that experience happened with that man, um, I continued shopping and checked out and walked home and unlocked the door and put away my groceries and didn't tell John because I thought he would think it was gross. Uh, and 
Like, at that time, I was like, damn, fuck him. And then, that, like, that was it. But because, you know, because of that attitude, I didn't think I would carry it for so many years. But... You know, if you ask, uh, like, on my on my life, if you ask 19-year-old me if they would wear pants, they would say, only at work. Um, I'm going to turn on my light, okay? Give me a second to, like, adjust it as well. Sorry, you can, like, see it. <laughs> That's not bad. I'm sorry, I'm a little oily. Do I look younger now? Um, so I'm just trying to read the chat a little bit because I kind of went off a second. I think you're an awesome storyteller. Thank you so much. Um, <clears throat> thank you. It's terrible how one man can do one thing and have such a lasting effect and people have the audacity to underplay a woman's experience. Yeah, and even in that, like, I underplayed my experience. And, like, um, I love my old roommate. I really love her so much. I came home, like I said, and, like, unpacked my groceries and stuff. And I sat on the couch and then I, like, laid down. And she was like, what the fuck is happening? And I, like, kind of told her. And, uh, for us to both, you know, talk shit, eat ice cream, like, you know, that was what I thought we would get into. And she went to the Aldi, she called the supervisor, she freaked out. And she was a very collected, nice, calm, you know, even a little out of place in the city kind of girl. Um, yeah, so, um, <clears throat> I was, yeah, I didn't even, I'm not saying I didn't take it seriously, but I didn't want to make a big deal. And I yell. But this, I like, I'd love to talk about something else. But I do think it's, um, you think it's fine until it's not. Yeah, I do think... Um, yeah, I'm not trying to upset a bunch of people because I know how I feel. Did you grow your eyebrows back? Yeah, actually, like, not on purpose. Actually, um, one person DM'd me and they were like, after you shave your eyebrows, like, five times, they don't grow back. And I was like, well, I've shaved them, like, 20 times and I've been plucking them and I'm sure they will grow back and they were like no they won't and I was like wow let's bet I have nothing to do on quarantine but grow my hair um so <laughs> I don't know it only takes like it would take two seconds for me to grow them back but I just felt like in quarantine I grew them I grew them out one to see if I could and I did what was funny, though, is the tails grew and not the middle for, like, the longest time. I feel like I can even, like, push this out of the way and you can kind of see. It's, like, here. Uh, I mean, it really only took, like, since March. So they do grow back. At least mine grew back. That's a lie. Only if you overpluck them do they not grow back. Yeah, you would really have to damage 
you would have to damage the hair follicle. And I mean, all my other hair grows back. Do they think eyebrows give up? Um, I don't think they meant waxing either because I actually, for a video I was working on that I gave up, I actually went to a beauty salon and asked to have my eyebrows waxed as goth eyebrows, like baby eyebrows, and I filmed the whole thing and the, like, the lady's reaction to it being very weird. So I was having them waxed for like a video as well, and they're fine. Shaving makes your leg hair grow thicker. And I mean, at least that is based in something like when you shave your legs. So if you shave any hair, like if this is your hair and this is it long, once it gets to this long stage and like this is its final length, it kind of grows like a cone. And then this little top length up here is like fine and a little thinner and just like wispier but if you shave it now it's this stump and the stump is going to look thicker it's going to look darker and it's going to seem thicker and stumpy because it's the like the root of the hair and then when it grows out again it's this whoosh, wispy fine la la so it's always going to look that way imo Oh man, taking me back to high school cosmetology. Are you still a hairdresser outside of lockdown? Um, I do my friend's hair. Like, people I know, because I do it at my house. So it has to be people who I'm okay with sharing my address with. You know what I mean? Have you ever tried a Brazilian wax? I have one and I absolutely hated it. I haven't. Um, this hair removal, like, um, this, like, laser hair removal company wanted to gift me a sponsorship of hair removal, but you can't get laser hair removal on areas that are tattooed. So I was like, wait a second. There's one place I'm not tattooed. But I didn't do it. Should I let my mom trim my crunchy dead ends? Yeah. Um, if she's nervous about it, flat iron your hair first. I mean, that'll make pretty easy lines and then take thin sections. And then don't wear your hair flat ironed ever again. Do they teach you curly hair in school? You, I learned about curly hair, but you do have to take an interest. Like... <laughs> If you want to learn about something that you feel like your professors are, like, uh, gla glazing over, glancing over, what's the expression? If you want to learn something like that, that you feel like your professors, teachers, aren't giving a lot of effort, you have to take a special interest, and curly hair can be one of those things. For me, braiding, I had the hardest time braiding and was certain that understanding braiding and learning about braiding would be a part of my certificate or at least my beauty school experience or at least $100 worth of the $5 billion I spent to go to cosmetology school. And it wasn't a oh, glossing over. So we learned braiding for like four hours one night out of the like 2,000 hours I needed to be there. So I just complained about it all the time. So if you want to learn curly hair, you really just have to keep asking. And, you know, asking for curly hair clients. Can you do a video doing those Hollywood waves? They were stunning. I'd love to. Did your school teach you nails? Um, we didn't learn acrylics. Uh, our school didn't have an autoclave, a sterilizer, so we weren't allowed to learn with any tools, and we weren't allowed to offer manicures that required tools, so we could only, if a client came in, we could only paint their nails, and, 
Like, they don't explain that. And at my school, at least, a manicure was $30. So you're like, oh, $30? That's definitely acrylics. Or like, that's definitely gel. That's definitely extensions. And it was not. It was not. It was just like organic nail polish. And I had a girl once. This is my favorite story. I had a girl once come in for a mani-pedi <clears throat> and she was about to catch a flight to California and she was wearing an Uggs coat, like Uggs, Uggs boot coat, full length coat. And she was like my age, so I felt really weird about it. And I'm giving her the pedicure, which like, I'm not like a foot fetish weirdo, but pedicures are kind of nice because you get to sit down and the water is hot and people generally, they're either, either they don't give a shit and they're not, it's not weird giving them a pedicure or they're uncomfortable by this like subservient behavior. So they're like on their phone. So really you're just like cleaning a lady's feet while she's on her phone. Um, or they kind of chat you. So I kind of liked doing pedicures because you get to sit, you know, it's, it's kind of nice. It's a whole foot thing, but it's like kind of nice. And honestly, I, I liked connecting with women through beauty. I'll say that with, like, full honesty. So, um, this Ugg Boots jacket lady, I did her pedicure first, and then when we moved to the manicure, um, she, like, tried to tell me, and I was like, nope, it's just polish, ma'am. It's just polish. And she was like, what the f- I had to be on a flight! And I was like, I don't know what they told you, but it's just polish um and she spoke to my manager but there was uh, there there was nothing i could do i was like i couldn't give you acrylics if i begged we don't have the we don't have an autoclave i can't sterilize the equipment here i'm a baby and this is a sleepover party manicure do you still want it but honestly i was like yeah dude spend 30 dollars somewhere else do people get acrylics on their feet some people get gel on their feet but we didn't we didn't offer gel i had to learn gel in my spare time my what's that say my mom and I went to a school like that and my mom was upset because it took two of us because it was the two of us and it was hella expensive for just nail polish. Yeah, it's kind of, it was pee pee poo poo because I would hope that the front desk would be like, okay, I'll set up a year appointment and do you know it's just polish? Do you know that girls can only offer you just polish? Um, And one thing that was pure evil was our menu at our beauty school you could get makeup but we didn't learn makeup you had to take a special interest so um we weren't given makeup brushes as a part of our cosmetology kit and we learned makeup theory for four hours one saturday and that was it and our teacher just talked about instagram eyebrows the whole time and she was particularly cruel about it um and i remember i had like Instagram eyebrows at the time. It was 2016. I looked good. Um, and me and like one other girl were both like, like in solidarity. Um, so she was the worst. And then she had us use our phones to like look up uh, like information about Mac. I was like, so this sucks. And this is the worst education I've ever received. But we actually would get people come in to get their makeup done. And the teachers or the, like, front desk would come down and ask if any of us had makeup brushes with us. And they were, like, our personal makeup brushes. Like, if you were going to touch up at school because makeup was a part of your uniform at our school. Um, At least, like, not full face, but, like, you had to look nice. A little mascara, perhaps. Um, And I remember we... (laughs) Someone from our class gave a girl a makeover with, like, some makeup. That's all I should really say. But 
I think a lot of students would hopefully talk people out of it. Because whenever it did happen, all of us would gather around like, oh, she's getting her makeup done, oh no. What's a good base price for scissors for hair? Are you doing your hair at home yourself on just you? Or are you um, a beginner? Or are you an expert? I'm, a, I'm in a technical college estheticians program and we had a half a semester dedicated to color theory and makeup and it was lovely. Yeah, so they, so if you get a cosmetology license, it's the umbrella. So if you have a cosmetology license, you're allowed to practice nails. Or you can just get a nails license. But with your cosmetology license, you can also cut hair and then decide to do nails. Or you can decide to do waxing. Or you can decide to do makeup. Or you can just specialize in any of those degrees. But the cosmetology license is all of them. And then it's supposed to be when you get your cosmetology license, you can choose to specialize. So if you just take an esthetician program, you'll learn waxing, skincare, and makeup. But if you have a cosmetology license, you mostly learn how to cut hair. So I can go work at Waxed Peach Boutique or whatever I want, but I'd actually need to be, I would have to relearn despite being certified. It's pee pee poo poo. Is cosmetology school just the bare basics and then you need to be shampoo human to actually learn the stuff? Um, it, it really depends. Like, in my school, there was job placement. However, you would need to specialize. So, if I did job placement for my school, I would actually, I would either have to do cut, haircut, or color. Like, or men's. Like, I'd have to specialize. But I wanted to do cut and color. So if you want to do that, you have to kind of go out on your own. And if you're going to work in a high-end salon, you have to assist or apprentice before you get hired to work at that salon. Um, and since that's what most people did before you, that's kind of what it's going to be. And a lot of people have different experiences in like how they were raised into a hairstylist so if you get a teacher who had a really hard apprenticeship they're going to make sure you had a really hard apprenticeship because that's how they learned um so you, you gotta shop around but if you want to work so Ulta has a salon and they hire outside of beauty school because they want to teach you like their like salon vibe or like their ethos they want you to be fresh from beauty school they prefer you with no experience and then they teach you their ways so from beauty school you could work at ulta you could work at hair cuttery you could work at walmart um and then from there you're cutting hair all the time and then you're kind of learning on the job but you're paid like hourly like you know 12 bucks an hour, whatever. I don't see a problem with that. I think that that's like a very fair way to learn. And I kind of, I wanted to work at Ulta. Working at Ulta was like one of my career choices. Um, and then I was offered an apprenticeship and I thought that that was a good choice for me. So it really depends. It also depends on your area. I live in a, in, I live in a major city. If I lived somewhere more rural or suburban, or a less major city where you can't charge people $60 for a haircut because no one will come, it's less competitive. But in Philly, and with current hair trends, like, we had a girl, um, like, black hair, Asian girl, so she spent $600 on one service in one day. Um, she, her hair was pretty long, but she wanted silver hair. So, I don't think you could charge $600 for a service like that in, like, Arkansas. However, 
it's also a major city so there's like a lot of trends and things like that are kind of amplified and people want to be seen and they they're willing to pay six hundred dollars for silver hair so it really helped you know in new york the prices are probably double and it's probably much more competitive basically beauty is a trade yes it's a trade i went to beauty school to learn a trade i wanted to learn how to do something with my hands so you know it is a trade. You go to trade school to learn how to do it. Does it vary a lot in different states? Yeah, so it is something that is, it really depends on what state you're in. New Jersey is like, requires the most training, um, for example. And then Pennsylvania and New York. New York requires a little less training like my mentor went to school in New York and then when she wanted to practice in Philly she actually needed more hours um in order to practice hair in Philly so it depends <clears throat> do you have any wisdom on picking what you're meant to do as you get older I'm getting close to 30 and feeling the pressure to conform and shit um six hundred dollars that's a lot of amiibos <laughs> in this economy it's not um pressure to conform i mean i'm no wise old wizard but i think that well five years ago my advice to you would be to keep learning and i do still feel that way especially like who could have seen this pandemic coming you know but if you're pretty well-rounded, I think that that's the best thing that you can personally do. Um, I mean, I, I went to beauty school for, I practiced beauty for like five years and spent like $18,000 going to beauty school and, and I don't do it anymore. Um, but I feel well-rounded because of it. Um, I've spent the last couple years and especially this last year really learning video editing software and really understanding like the ins and outs of video editing so at least i'm learning that and you know I, this this isn't a job i could retire with you know um but i do love this job and really i i live within my means and i think if that's your goal if you're somebody who um you know you don't live super lavishly find something that you can live with and keep learning keep changing keep reading new books meeting different friends like if you fall down a youtube rabbit hole about teaching english in japan feel that out see what it's like get your bachelor's at night move to japan um but in all seriousness i mean for any reason my career could change immediately and so could anyone else's so my best advice is to be really well-rounded i don't think you need to necessarily conform customer service is a, a very valued skill hospitality is a really valued skill so if if you have a customer service background yeah if it's from target it's still pretty valued on a resume I don't know a lot i would say all of my friends are just cowboys in all of this and we all get jobs that pay for what we need in the moment so i mean that's i don't know if it's advice but it's a comfortable way that my friends and i live turning 27 in a week and i tell people so basically 30 yes <clears throat> would you ever consider getting someone else to help with editing um I can't afford it. <laughs> I can't afford an editor. I don't think my channel, my channel is honestly not even at a place where it should be my only job. But I mean, I think my channel would have to grow to justify having an editor. And honestly, I would, I would honestly keep editing. One, I do like editing and every video I edit, the next video I get a little better. And I do feel happy with that personal growth. I also think when I edit, like the Tiger King skit with the guitar, 
that came in the editing process, so I'd love to be there. If I made content that was the same all the time, I could have an editor because it would be more homogenized. It would just be like blah blah blah. But I don't my brain is like too crazy. If I had a podcast, that would make sense to have an editor. I also am a pretty proficient editor, so Honestly, for a couple extra bucks, I would love to edit another YouTuber's video for them as well. I think that would be great, and then put that money into my own channel so I can fly across the United States and interview my subscribers. Ooh, people are saying it's laggy. I will yell. We have been here for over two hours, and you guys know I try to keep these at like two hours because my voice will give out. What are you editing on? I have Final Cut Pro and I'm not loving it anymore. I use Adobe Premiere, um, but I did go to a YouTube class where everyone told me that I should use Final Cut because it saves them time. Adobe Premiere is very... Um, it's, it's, you have to do everything. There's not a lot of shortcuts. And yeah, there's keyboard shortcuts, but there's not like, you have to do everything. And I know a lot of people who like m more presets or more like things like that. Honestly, I love you editing the videos. It's just more quick in that way. Thanks. I, I like editing them. Honestly, my channel would be best, not even with like an editor, but like a manager or like an assistant. Like I said, like if, an, if a brand doesn't pay me, I like don't pursue it. Or like if I get like there's a like a sponsor, I'm pretty unorganized about a lot of that stuff. And I think I miss a lot of opportunities. And also I have a ton of video ideas and I'll either forget them or I'll shoot the video and then not edit it. So if I had like someone just like yell at me, like that would be great or keep me organized. That would do way better for me than a, um, an editor. A manager would probably be a better place to put that editor money. Did they teach sound at the YouTube class? I feel like people take that part of video making for granted. So the YouTube class doesn't teach you video editing. It teaches you content strategy or brand or, um, you know, stuff like that. We had one really good um, YouTube class for like mental health, which was really, really nice. It was right after the James Charles controversy. And it was great timing because I felt awful during all that. Gotta make them actually pay you, though. Quicken collects. Yeah, I'm coming after you. Search and find mobile app. I forget what it's called. So, we are at the two-hour mark, and I think it would be... Shout out to lookbooks. Love your lookbooks. And Tattoo Talk Tuesdays. Thank you, Nina. I have a lookbook coming out. It's not like a lookbook. It's more like a outfits challenge but that's coming out this week right because today's only tuesday today's wednesday <sighs> oh i don't know if you guys can read that somebody nailed their spencer shoot i probably shouldn't share this pub this information in public um you should put up a channel management application. I'm sure a lot of people would love to have a weekly meeting for ideas and brainstorming to tell, to yell at you. Yeah, I wish my brother could be my manager, honestly, like Grimes. I don't know how to look for a manager. I, actually, like, if I ever got a million subscribers, I would just hire Ryan's brother to be my manager. He's, like, the best person I know to do exactly that job. I wish I could do that. The best, I think the coolest part about getting famous is when people like hire their whole families to do shit. That's all I want. If I could just like my, that would be my dream. Not even moving into a big house, like still living here, but I could give all my friends jobs. 
outfits challenge. Should I take a vacation in Philadelphia? Yeah, I was I was looking at Philly Airbnbs the other night and there's like really good ones. Um, so it is past our two hour mark, so I'm going to say goodnight to you guys, especially because you guys are experiencing some lag and I would rather cut the live stream short and sweet with a proper goodbye versus it get cut up in pieces. If you miss any part of this live stream, I will be posting it in its entirety. It will take like an hour to come up if you missed it. If you left a super chat um, or joined the channel members during the feed, huge thank you to all of you. Angela, thank you so much. Hey, it's Dom, Cutie Pie, Sheepish Bree. Thank you, Cutie Pie, for your super chat. And I hope you listen to Bjork. Um, Toria Webb, thank you. Thank you, Caroline. Rebecca, thank you so much. Josie and Faith, welcome. Um, Grace and Leah, I thought, I, I see you all the time. Um, Carly, thank you so much for your super chat. And you guys are the best. Thank you so much, always. Um, and thank you guys so much for the support for yesterday's video. If you haven't checked it out, um, even Valonius, who is an old man, said that he watched it, and even though it was an hour, he said that, you know, it was smooth in dialogue, and, uh, you know, that was really cool. I was worried, but, you know, some of the feedback is it didn't feel like an hour, so I do recommend it. You know, um, I am biased, because it is something I created, but for those of you who have checked it out, the comments have been really supportive and really great. I explained earlier in this live stream that even even putting out something vulnerable was really hard and today I am feeling emotionally exhausted from being that vulnerable in a good way, you know, just tired. And then from, from the business back end, it can be really scary to take such a risk on your channel because, you know, you could make something that you know everybody will like and it might not hurt your channel, but to put out an hour long video that, you know, a lot, it might separate some of your audience and make them feel excluded, that's pretty scary. And you guys really received it so well. And I'm, I'm so grateful. Grateful for my channel members who keep the back end of this channel alive, especially, you know, when when this this is a pretty scary time so thank you guys again all the new members you guys do it and uh i'm glad i'm glad we can all hang out during these streams <laughs> i'm sorry this lighting is really scary but um thank you again uh and i guess thanks you know my internet provider for <laughs> fixing this so we can stream again which is really great it's never that i don't want to it's that i don't want to do a bad job so thank you. Someone asked me what microphone I use. I didn't ignore you. It's a snowball. It looks like this. If you like the quality, this is a good industry standard. It's on the medium lower end. I think on Amazon you can get them between $40 and $80. Um, a family friend gave me this one. And even used. It's been brilliant. So if you can find it on eBay or something. Um, oh no, someone just got here. This is the sign off. I'm actually leaving. <laughs> Um, thank you guys so, so, so much. If you missed the stream, of course, it'll be live on my channel later tonight. And of, of course, always, you can follow me on Instagram. I update my story every day. If you like the company, if you like the pictures of my cat, if you like the gags, if you like the updates, it's at Quiet Cool Kid. And then for more back-end personal channel updates, you can follow me on Twitter, also at Quiet Cool Kid. <laughs> oh, no everybody who just got here i'm so sorry this video will be permanent on my channel it's in the lives playlist folder check out yesterday's video and i love you 